Today we're going to talk about three things that I did to help me get pregnant with PCOS. So stick around and I'll tell you a little bit more. So the first thing that I did was yoni steaming. And some people may call it vaginal steaming. So what does this look like? It is using herbs and getting steam from the herbs to go up into the uterus, into your uha, into your vagina, and trying to get those the essential oils or the healing properties from those herbs to go into um, the uterus. So this practice is centuries old. Um, it is different tribes in, all over the world do this, but I know it could be unconventional in, you know, in the U.S. and in the Western world, right? But I found this to be super beneficial and helpful for me. One of the things that I noticed immediately was the decrease in my menstrual cramps. I used to have debilitating, you know, debilitating pain, the kind of pain where you you can't go to school, you can't go to work, you got to take like three or four days off and you're in pain and you're crying and you have the hot water pack on the stomach and then you have the hidden pad on the back and you're using Tylenol with more train. You're just trying to do whatever just to get the pain to like not take you out. That's the kind of debilitating pain I used to have. And I started to get relief once I started to do yoni steaming. Yoni steaming also helped if you have PCOS, you know, this may be a little TMI, so if you're like, about this stuff, fast forward. But a lot of us girls with PCOS sometimes have, like, may not get your period for a long time, and then when you finally get it, it's just like, it's not cute. Not that blood is cute, but it's just not, like, it looks funny. <laughs> it can look like old blood and... You want to get all of that stuff out. And I think yoni steaming helps with like just, you know, getting all those old stuff out of your system um, that, that may happen from like not completely shedding when you got your period. Because if you're going months and months without period, which happens with a lot of people who have irregular um, menstruation, you may have like build up of like old blood in your system that needs to come out. And I think yoni steaming was very very good for doing that and it was very good for like just getting everything just moving again so i vouch by the yoni steaming some benefits of yoni steaming is for bringing fresh blood into the uterus into the pelvic region of your body it will help reduce some inflammation i think that's why the pain level um the cramping reduced is because it was reducing the level of inflammation that you're experiencing. It can help with making irregular cycles a bit more regular. It can help with cramping. It can help with regulating your hormones. It can help with, it can just, I don't know. I just found it to be like really great for me. Um, and if this is not for you, don't bash other people, okay? And like, like just be like, oh, this is not for me and kind of move on. But if it is something that you want to try, there are a lot of YouTube videos out there um, that can help you with getting started with something like that. And if you have specific questions, feel free to like send me a comment, you know, put a comment below and I'll try to be helpful and show you what I did that was helpful for me. But again, you know, I'm going to share three things. Pick the one that works for you and don't judge other people for the things that they do. For themselves. Some of my favorite herbs that were in the yoni steam is mugwort, lavender, um, basil was another one that I think were in the mixes that I tend to buy. So I would also put links to those um, blends, the yoni steam blends that I have found helpful. I'll put links to them in the description box. So one thing that I want to tell you is I want to empower you to try something new. If the old thing that you're doing is not working, it is worthwhile to try something new. Of course, be in your comfort zone if you choose to. But I feel like this was something that was a low hanging fruit that I could try. And I'm so grateful because I got so much benefit from doing it. Another unconventional way that I helped myself 
um, heal my PCOS and eventually get pregnant is through Mayan abdominal massage. So Mayan abdominal massage, again, is for helping you with getting circulation and blood into the uterus. So a lot of times what happens is that it's just static blood in the uterus. It's not, stuff. things aren't moving, but the Mayan abdominal massage, again, there's a lot of YouTube videos out there, I'll link stuff in the description box. It would help you with actually getting things moving again. It is a massage, it's a, you know, it's a deep pressure massage in your tummy and it's, um, I would have my husband do this on me because I find it hard sometimes to kind of like really get in there and rub my belly and he would help me with like rubbing my belly, we'll put the oil on it and it will rub my belly in a in a in a circular motion and just to get things moving. Again, I found this to be super beneficial, especially with like starting to induce ovulation again, getting blood into the ovaries, um just getting things moving. And I feel like that's what the Mayan abdominal massage did for me. Again, you can do this on yourself by watching YouTube videos, but there are also a lot of licensed practitioners who practice this and can do this for you. So also consider that as an option if it's something that you were nervous about, but it's your tummy. As long as you're not pregnant, you can't do this while you're pregnant. So if you sit when you're pregnant, don't do it. But otherwise, you can just start slowly, watch a few videos, practice on yourself, have a partner practice on you, and you guys can like just start to get things moving. I promise you, this is one of the this was really, really key for also, I used to have like this achiness, like this achy pain just around the ovary and stuff. This helped with that. This helped with getting nourishment from the blood and just getting them into the ovaries, into the uterus, into the pelvic region. So consider a Mayan abdominal massage. Next time that you want a massage, try that out. And if you've tried it before, let me know what your experience is. Uh, experience was like in the comment section. I didn't use a practitioner, I did it myself and I'll show you a few of the YouTube videos that I tried that helped me and my husband, you know, practice this. Something else that I tried is seed cycling. So seed cycling is essentially when you eat different types of seed to try to produce the right hormones in your body. So you're trying to have the perfect ratio of progesterone and estrogen. And if you eat the right combination of seeds, you can actually try to mimic what those hormones would do in your body. So I found this helpful for like the fact that sometimes I would have really long menstrual cycle that just felt like it was dragging on. So these are like 32, 40 days plus menstrual cycles. I mean, they were insane. I know some people have it up to like three months of no cycle, right? So I I understand. And I found this to be beneficial um, in trying to get my body to move to that 28 day cycle. Granted, I never got to 28 days. Even till I had my baby, I never got to 28 days. Remember that 28 days is, um, is an average. It doesn't mean that you fall into that category. But you have to find out what your numbers were. So I ended up at, I think, between 30 and 32 days. And my cycle became more consistent around and in, in that range. So it's like I was getting my cycle every 32 days once I was able to implement a lot of these things that I'm sharing in these videos. Um, so seed, seed cycling was definitely helpful in helping me with sh to shorten the extremely long cycles that I was having. Something to keep in mind is that you're not going to do this once and then it just works. That's just not how it works. You have to remember that your body has been in this state for a long time. So you have to give it time to readjust to the new things that you're trying, the natural re remedies that you're trying. And I had to learn that as well. I had to learn to be patient. So it, did, it this did not change overnight. I gave myself multiple cycles to see. Is my cycle getting shorter? And I noticed that it was going from like the, the 40 days, the 50 days. It was coming back down till we got it down to 32. Granted, it's not just the seed cycling that did this, but it definitely played a part in trying to get my hormones to get regulated. So seed cycling constitutes two different parts, right? You are eating a certain 
seed, two different types of seeds from day 1 through 14, and then you're eating a second set of seeds on day 15 to 28. And that number will vary based on a lot of factors. I go into this a little bit more in the blog post that I'm going to link below. So during the first part of your cycle, you're going to be eating one tablespoon of flax seed. You're going to eat one tablespoon of pumpkin seeds. So you can add this on your salad. You can sprinkle this on your salad. You can put it in your smoothie. You can consume it whatever way you want, but you want to get the seeds into your system for those first 14 days. The second 14 days, you're going to be use, using one tablespoon of sesame seeds and one tablespoon of sunflower seeds daily. Again, you can put this in your salad, you can put this in your smoothie, you can eat them whatever way you choose. And I'm going to say this again. <laughs> so um, this, uh, this is something that worked for me. Hopefully it works for you. But again, it's important to know that these are more natural remedies and a lot of people have had success with it but you're also going to have people that are going to say this is not going to work for you i don't you know whatever so you can listen to the naysayers or you can give it a try the worst that's going to happen is that you ate some healthy seeds <laughs> and you included them in your diet like nothing bad is going to happen from this but if you do try it there is a possibility that it could work for you don't be shy about giving these ideas a try. The thing to note about these methods and unconventional things that I'm sharing with you is that when I heard them for the, when I heard them for the first time, I felt like they just didn't fit into my little pretty box of things that I thought I needed to do to get pregnant. I was like, this just seemed real crazy. I, I don't think I need all that. But I think the more I started to open my mind and read, read a lot of success stories. I started to kind of follow in the back of my mind and I think, why not? Why isn't this possible for me? Why couldn't I just try these things? Luckily, I have a very supportive partner who supported me through some of the unconventional things that I wanted to try and we eventually found success in trying them. So don't get me wrong, we went the fertility treatment route, it was just not successful. And I decided because of, I just, my body just needed a break, I told my partner, I, I wanna try this a different way. Let's slow down a little bit, let's try to do this naturally. Let's try to do this with a naturopathic doctor. Let's try to incorporate some lifestyle changes. Let's put all these other things into play and see what happens. And guess what? It worked. So I'm saying all that to encourage you today that no matter where you are right now, you can pick one thing to do. Just pick one thing that you're consistent about and just believe and work at it and see if it works for you. It's, it's not going to make the situation worse, but at least you will learn a little bit more about yourself. As usual, I tell you to grab your notebook. Make sure you're writing all your experiences down. The things that are working for you, the things that aren't working for you. I have a workbook that is also helpful in that. I, I'm going to link down the, um, the description box below. It even has information about you know, seed cycling, tracking your seed cycling, things like that. So if that is of interest to you, click the description below, click the notification bell, click subscribe, comment, just let me know what's up. Let me know if you find this valuable and if you want me to do future videos and any of the topics that are more related to you. So if you have any specific questions for me about how I got pregnant with PCOS, let me know and I'll be more than happy to answer them in future videos. Again, thank you for stopping by and have a wonder day. I mean, a wonderful day. What was that? <laughs>